Hello, and welcome back to our Ice Age Reserve. The votes for the name of the park have been counted. We have our result. Thank you to everyone who suggested their ideas, and thank you to everyone who voted. And now, the time has come. The people have spoken. The park will be known as Pleistocene Park. A massive thank you to Helm Gems for this brilliant name suggestion. In inspiration of the real place that is trying to restore the mammoths. With that said, let us continue our build of Pleistocene Park. Okay, let's begin this Ice Age settlement. So the first hut we're going to build is for the lumberjack, a very important job. This is the guy who will chop down trees and then chop them into logs to be used as building materials. So everybody else is relying on him for these building materials to make their own huts. So we put some of those logs there, you can see as support beams. The walls would have probably been made out of stone and then covered with a, a mixture of dirt and clay and the roof is made out of thatch to keep the roof uh, nice and waterproof and also keep lots of insulation uh, so the, the heat doesn't escape the hut. They would definitely need to have that insulation because it would be very, very cold during the Ice Age times. And uh, here you can see uh, we're putting on a little extension this is where he can put his firewood and keep all his logs dry. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be in the same room where he's sleeping and uh, eating. So he can put all his logs underneath here to keep them dry for the firewood. Lovely. And we'll just stack them up there. And we've got some baskets and some um, pots and things outside um, where he could keep different materials, different tools. Here we're just going to put in a, a beam just to keep that roof from falling down. So this settlement is quite, um, quite, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they're quite modern, um, modern for the Ice Age anyway. I know these are old buildings, but for the Ice Age, uh, these are quite modern. These would have only been built towards the end of the Ice Age. Um, now the Ice Age was around for a very, very long time. Uh, it began um, 2.4 million years ago. That's when the Ice Age began. And it ended 11,500 years ago. So it lasted for over more than 2 million years. Now in those 2 million years, humans were not, uh, they hadn't left Africa yet. Uh, humans had only left Africa around 60 to 90,000 years ago um, and it would have took them some time to eventually venture up into the northern hemisphere and come in contact with mammoths and other Ice Age creatures. So when they first started building settlements they would have been made very basic uh, out of the tusks of mammoths, uh, even mammoth bones and eventually they got better at building as they uh, evolved and improved on their building skills and their hunting skills as well. Uh, they got better at what they did. So they started to build things out of stone, then they started using wood, and eventually they got to buildings like this where they had thatch roofs, and uh, they were quite well established at this point. And here you can see, I'm just putting in the fire. This is the... Um, the central part of the camp. So this is where everyone will gather in the evening around the fire to cook their food 
and to talk as well, have conversations and uh, speak about you know plans of what they're going to do, where they're going to hunt and what they're going to build, uh, you know, discuss what needs to happen. And you can see that I've just put some bones um, around the uh, that other hut. Uh, I'm thinking they have a hut where they grind up the bones or smash the bones open to get to the bone marrow inside, which is a very nutritious uh, part of the animal, full of nutrients. And they definitely would have done this. They would have fed off bone marrow. Uh, nothing would have been wasted. They would have used everything. They wouldn't have thrown away food. They would have been very resourceful. They couldn't afford it. Uh, living in this harsh climate, they had to make sure they used everything they could. They would not waste anything. And here, we're just gonna put in the chief's tent. So this is going to be where the leader sleeps. So his tent's going to be, well, it's not really a tent, um, a hut. So his hut is going to be a little bit larger. And we're also going to have a fire in there for him as well. And we'll just put the roof on there. Lovely. So yeah, we're gonna give each hut uh, a type of job, what their distinctive job is to the tribe and what they're going to be doing and what they're going to be bringing for the, for the tribe as well. So we've got the bone crusher over there who's going to be grinding up the bones and cracking open bones uh, to get that bone marrow. We've got the wood wood chopper here, the, uh, the lumberjack who's chopping down woods, uh, chopping down wood, sorry, <laughs> chopping down trees. And I'm just trying to make it look lived in. So I'm trying to put in um, lots of baskets and pots. Oh, here I'm going to put in uh, an area where he can chop his wood. So that big um, stump there is where he can put his wood on top of it and then he can chop it. And I'm going to attempt to make an axe. Now, it doesn't have to look perfect because it is um, an ice age axe, so it won't be very, you know, it'll, it'll just be a stone that's been sharpened down and then strapped to a piece of wood. So here we go, let's try and make an ax. So I'm trying to get the best rock, flatten it down, make it look like it's chopped into the wood. And there's the handle there. And we just need to put some rope on that to make it look like it's been uh, strapped to the handle. I think that looks rather, rather nice. And the next thing we're going to make is some spears. Um, they definitely would have needed spears for hunting and also defending the, the tribe. So we're gonna put all our spears here and we're gonna put a little rack that they can uh, stand on. And I'm putting them next to the chief's tent. So maybe if there was a, an animal that raided the camp or another tribe that attacked them, uh, they'd sound an alarm and everyone would come running up to these spears and uh, run to the defense areas to uh, defend the camp. And here I'm just gonna put in a nice bed for the lumberjack man. So I've just used a wall and used that uh, kind of thatched weaving there for the bed. I want it to look, um, you know, I don't want it to look too modern. I want it to look like it's made in those times. I'm trying to think of what would look like a blanket here uh, that would look like some kind of hide. Uh, I think I just use another wall to make the colour look like it could be some kind of skin or hide off an animal or something. But I think that looks alright. Uh, a few mammoth tusks there. Lovely. And those tusks would have been would have been ivy as well, so they would have used ivy to carve uh, tools, weapons. Sometimes even uh, decorations as well, they would have made little models and stuff like that. Uh, little carvings out of them uh, for you know, little um, toys maybe for the children. Oh, and here uh, we're going to make some canoes. Uh, this was quite difficult to do. I tried making them out of many different things and this was the thing that were the best. Uh, just a curved roof, stretch it, and try and make each side look uh, the same. And then you've got a canoe. And it's just trying to line everything up and make it look like 
it's uh, yeah, it is a little bit difficult, but I think it looks quite nice in the end. And what we'll do is we'll have two canoes. So these are the fishermen's boats. Um, they'll go out and get fish for the for the rest of the tribe. And we're going to give them some oars. So I'm just trying to find a piece of wood here. There we go. Flatten that piece and then attach that there. Lovely. And we'll put some oars in the boats here. So they can go out and catch some, some trout or salmon that have swam upstream and uh, bring them back to feed the rest of the tribe. And we'll put some benches here where they can sit down in the boat. lovely stuff and we'll build him a shelter as well the fisherman's house that can go on this little beach area that we've made and this is actually in the reserve so the guests won't be able to come down here but they can look over the bridge as they cross off the island uh, they'll be able to see that there so it's a they won't be able to go over to it but uh, I think it just looks nice a bit of scenic view for them to, to look at as they walk through the park lovely and we'll put some baskets here where they can put all their fish when they've collected them and we don't want those boats um, getting away uh, so we're going to just put a post here strapping them up make sure that they are they don't uh, float off into the middle of the lake lovely stuff I rather like that I think that looks quite nice so there we have it and now we'll put some seat seats in here uh, just tree stumps to sit on and here we're just gonna put the path in so the guests can actually walk through the settlement and really get an idea of what it would have been like to live uh, during this time for a Neanderthal or Homo sapien and over here what we're gonna have is a little show so the guests can sit down on these stone benches and we'll have uh, a craftsman that will come out and basically put on a show of you know showing different techniques of how they would have made things uh, they could show them how to make weapons how they would have made spears or axes uh, bow and arrows um, all sorts of different uh, things they would have made and I imagine we'd have actors you see this sometimes when you go to uh, like a medieval castle and people that will be dressed up in medieval clothing and acting out as if they were living in that time so we could have people walking around this area yeah you know we could employ people to uh, act as if they were Neanderthals maybe put makeup on them uh, make the brows a bit um, you know, thicker and their nose is a bit bigger because that's what Neanderthals looked like. They had a, a much bigger nose to cope with the cold. Uh, they were a lot more, um, um, more brawny and a lot more tougher than Homo sapiens. Um, so you may think, why did they die out if they were so tough and they were so strong? How come they died out? Well, it seems that when it comes to brawniness and it comes to smartness, uh, the smart ones, the Homo sapiens, which had much larger brains than Neanderthals, uh, they would use their brain rather than their brawn. So uh, the Neanderthals would not migrate. As winter approached and the glaciers would travel down from the north, it would get a lot more colder and the Neanderthals would just stick through it. They'd just say, we're gonna just push through it. And that harsh lifestyle caused them to evolve to become incredibly tough. But our ancestors on the other hand, the Homo sapiens, instead of toughing it out, they thought to themselves, well, why? Why bother staying here? It's freezing cold. If we just travel down south where it's warmer, we can get lots of food, we can live just as we were up here. So that's what uh, gave our ancestors 
uh, the advantage. They use their heads rather than just being brawny and toughing it out. And that's not the only reason um, that they outcompeted them, that there was many other different uh, factors as well. Um, but you've got to remember these are two different species. So they would have been, you know, um, competing against each other for food, for territory. Uh, so they probably, well, they definitely did come across each other and now and again they would have had fights. Um, now a one-on-one -on -one, a Neanderthal probably would beat a Homo sapien because they're a lot stronger, a lot tougher. Um, but uh, Homo sapiens had the, the brains on their side, so they could maybe use tactics or create better weapons and eventually uh, the Neanderthals were completely wiped out. There was only one space for one human um, and that was the Homo sapiens. But you may be surprised to know this, some of you may know, but Neanderthals are kind of still with us today in the form of DNA. Yes, this is actually true. Now, when Homo sapiens and uh, Neanderthals came across each other in the wild, yes, they would have attacked each other on occasion, but sometimes they actually didn't fight, they actually mated instead. And this caused crossbreeding. So Neanderthal DNA and human DNA mixed, and that uh, Neanderthal DNA has been passed down uh, for generations and generations of passing down genes and they've done studies on uh, some people and they've actually found Neanderthal tiny bits of Neanderthal DNA inside them so they actually are carrying uh, a small percentage of Neanderthal DNA which I just think is absolutely amazing so you know it's lasted all that time it's been passed down so it's only a small um, percentage of DNA it's not enough to look at a person and go oh my god they look like a Neanderthal for example for instance um, chimpanzees we share up to 98.8 percent of the same DNA so our DNA is 98.8 percent the same as a chimpanzee I think that's incredible so it's only that um, 1.2 percent difference that makes us different to a chimp it's extraordinary and you don't look at a chimpanzee and a human obviously you can see that we're related we can see we're apes but we are very different um, you can definitely tell the difference you, you wouldn't glance at an ape and get mixed up and go oh was, was that a human that, that walked past in the distance there you can definitely tell the difference between chimps and human beings um, but the percentage that we share of Neanderthal DNA uh, it varies so it's between 1 and 4 percent so some people may be slightly higher they may have a, a higher concentration of Neanderthal DNA within them uh, some people slightly lower uh, but it's only in um, non African modern humans so it depends on which region of the world your ancestors came from now this is because um, those Neanderthals were living in the northern hemisphere and the humans that were migrating down south and coming back up they would have bred with them um, but uh, some humans did not leave Africa at all so when we first left Africa um, up to 60 or 90,000 uh, years ago some humans stayed so those humans did not come into contact with the Neanderthals that were living in the north and that's why they don't carry uh, any Neanderthal DNA so it's all very very interesting stuff uh, learning about our ancestors history uh, yes very very interesting indeed and here we are building uh, a little um, restaurant, a little cafe, uh, somewhere where the guests can get something to eat in the village. And we're going to call this the Carnivore Cafe. And I want to put a silhouette of a saber tooth on the front of it. Maybe we could make a, a meal, a challenge meal called the Mammoth Burger, which is an enormous burger. And if you finish it, you get a prize or something like that. I don't know. Um, but we will have other options. We'll make sure that the guests 
uh, needs are met. You know, they've got a nice variety of different things to choose from on the menu. And just finish off that lovely thatch roof there. Beautiful. So, yeah, it's coming along now. Um, this settlement, we've got uh, lots of different... Um, Lots of different huts. Uh, I don't think I mentioned the front one there, that's going to be a forager's hut. So this will be someone that goes out into the woods looking for berries, nuts, mushrooms, and coming back with his basket full of uh, food, and then the rest of the tribe can eat that. Because that's, you know, it wouldn't be all meat that uh, our ancestors would have eaten. They would have eaten things like that they would have had to forage for. Um, but meat did make up a, a big part of their diet. Uh, they needed that protein and the fats as well to get them through those winter months. So we're just gonna do the outside of the cafe now. And I want to make this a little bit of a, a nice garden. Um, some plants and things, some toilets here for the guests. And we'll just connect that with a nice path. But yeah, I can just imagine uh, loads of different actors walking around this section, you know, dressed up, looking like uh, prehistoric people, and the guests can interact with them, um, you know, and it would be really fun. It would be great for the kids as well. The kids will be able to see, you know, what it was like back then. And here I was debating whether to put a, a woolly mammoth um, hedge in but I think it just doesn't suit I think um, it will take away the prehistoric feel so we're just gonna put some nice flowers in um, around there add a bit of color and then a few more trees around here beautiful okay so let's get up a few more facts about our ancestors uh, for this human habitat <laughs> human habitat um, I wonder if Prehistoric Kingdom would uh, entertain that idea. Imagine bringing Neanderthals back and releasing them into the wild. That would be uh, an interesting an interesting concept. Um, yeah, in fact, they probably could do that, to be honest, But um, in real life. But I don't think people would be very happy. I think people would definitely kick off about that, bringing back Neanderthals. Um, I remember in Zoo Tycoon 2, um, there was a big uh, ice, it was like a big glacier uh, that you could put into your exhibits and it melted and then a Neanderthal walked out and just started walking around the zoo. Uh, if anyone's played that game, there's Zoo Tycoon 2 um, with the, the dinosaur extension pack on it. Yes, I remember, remember there's just a man walking around the zoo dressed up uh, like a caveman. Um, but yeah, um, anyway, let's, let's get on to some of the facts. Oh, before we do that, let's just talk about here. So here we're putting on the back extension uh, for the Carnival Cafe. Um, that's where the kitchen's going to be and on the other side the toilets. And this is where the staff can come out and this is where uh, the bins and stuff can go. And also, I think a nice little area for the staff to uh, come and have something to eat on their break. Um, maybe it's nice weather, well, <laughs> nice weather, it's freezing cold, but maybe it's a sunny day and they just want to sit in the sun, you know, not sat inside. Um, they can sit on that table and, uh, you know, talk with uh, their colleagues on their break. See, we are even thinking of the staff here. We're not just thinking about the guests and the animals. We want the staff to be happy too. Um, Oh, and here we're going to put in a tent where we're going to have a fire display. So someone uh, can put on a show at a certain time, just like the crafts um, show across the road there, across the road, across the path. Uh, we're going to have a fire display. So this is going to teach people all different techniques that our ancestors used to light fire. Uh, rubbing sticks together, maybe um, using flint and um, that other technique they use where they get a stick stuck into another stick and they rub it back and two with a string. I don't know what it's called. Uh, but yes, here this will just be showing the guests 
what the ancestors how they how they came across fire what they used it for how they did it um, all the different techniques that they would have would have used so I'm putting down here some um, some tarp like blankets so the guests can actually sit down on the floor like our ancestors did and uh, can you know really get down you know ground themselves on the floor with the fire and uh, learn some interesting information and we'll put some logs at the back there that the uh, the instructor can use to teach the guests how to how to light a fire lovely but anyway I've gone off on a tangent there I was going to tell you some facts about our ancestors um, so one of the most important things that happened for our ancestors during the Ice Age, well, man met his best friend. And of course, that is the dog. Um, or should I say, the wolf. Um, because dogs descended from wolves, and it was during the Ice Age when we, when our ancestors tamed uh, domesticated wolves and it's estimated this is quite a varied estimate it's between 15,000 or 40,000 years ago now the Ice Age ended uh, 11 and a half thousand years ago so it was definitely during the Ice Age when this happened so I wonder how it happened what came about did um, someone was eating their meat and they looked across and there was a wolf and they, they threw the meat to them and they became friends or you know how, how did it how did it come about it was probably that it was probably a wolf came over to investigate a carcass uh, maybe a member of the the tribe threw them some food felt a bit generous or something or maybe they threw the meat to distract them away um, you know, maybe the wolves were coming over and they thought, oh, we'll chuck the meat to try and get them away from us so we can get our food and go. And maybe, I don't know, wolves probably just associated humans with food. Um, so they probably would have followed humans because they knew if we follow them, we're going to find food. And it may have, you know, both species may have realized that actually we can benefit from each other. And became a team started working together as one team which is just amazing uh, you know two species coming together I think it's just uh, it really is incredible uh, but yes speaking of hunting together and stuff like that we are putting in a hunter's cabin here and this I think will be very good for the guests because this is something where they can interact um, we're going to have a spear throwing competition so the guests can come up to the hunter's cabin there will be someone there to um, make sure everything's safe and make sure everyone's doing uh, as they're told no one's going to get hurt and they can come up and pick up a spear and then they can try and throw it at one of these um, silhouettes of the animals so we're just putting the spears in there that they can use um, and I think this would be really good uh, I've tried this before um, in France there was a it was called prehistoric I think it's prehistoric park I think it was called I'm sure it's I'm sure it's called prehistoric park um, and you could throw spears at silhouettes like this to practice your uh, hunting skills and what the spear had I thought this was really interesting you held um, a piece of wood that stuck into the spear and it was like another lever so as you flinged this piece of wood that would then act like you had an extra elbow and fling the spear and you'd be surprised at how far you can throw it it was amazing it just went flying um, so yeah I thought you know what I'm gonna interpret that idea in here because I think it would be great for our guests to um, you know, have a go at throwing these spears and seeing how far they can get it. And they can have a competition maybe with the family, see who can throw the furthest. Uh, so we've got the saber-toothed cat at the front. So imagine that cat is coming to attack you 
you've got to throw your spear to defend yourself. That's quite an easy one, it's quite close, but it's quite a small target, so, well, smaller than the other animals that you're going to be throwing the spear at. Uh, we then have the rhinoceros, the woolly rhinoceros. Uh, that's a little bit further away, but a medium-sized target. And then we have the woolly mammoth at the end here. But this one is, it might be a big target, but it's very far away. So do you think you'd be able to throw your spear that far? Even with the extra piece of uh, wood that acts like a, an extra elbow, do you think you'd be able to throw it that far and hit the mammoth? Uh, we could have competitions. Um, I imagine a lot of the spears will be going all over the place. So in a minute, I go in and put spears on the floor and spears that have actually hit the targets. Um, yeah, so I thought that, that's nice. It's something to interact the guests, get the guests actually doing something. Um, so yeah, we've just got to blend in that forest there and uh, put some plants down so it looks a bit more natural and overgrown. Lovely stuff. And now, Let's put some spears that have gone flying into the targets. Ooh, right into the back of the woolly rhino there and the back of the saber tooth. And a few in the ground as well. And you know what's interesting as well? That piece of wood I'm talking about. In fact, you know what? I need to find out the name of it. Ah, it's called a spear thrower. Uh, a spear throwing lever. Uh, which helps uh, store energy uh, during the throw, uh, creating um, a much uh, further, it can help you throw a lot further. But uh, yeah, what's interesting about this is that uh, this uh, piece of equipment didn't just happen in one place, it happened in multiple different uh, places across the world. Um, separately so it wasn't passed down it actually happened uh, individually so what's amazing about that is humans all across the planet came up with this themselves they came up with this technique they realized that actually if we use this lever it makes us throw a lot further um, and they all came up with the different designs and different variations of it but it's mad that that you know humans that never met they never pass, passed on this knowledge to each other. They just figured it out themselves. I think that's incredible. So there we have it, the spear throwing competition. Got plenty for the guests to do, so they can throw their spears. They can learn how to light fire. Uh, they can interact with the actors. Um, they can watch a show on the arts and crafts. Oh, I just noticed there as well, there was hot uh, coals. Um, so when I've made all those fires, um, I didn't realize you could put that in so I think that's a nice little detail there and this is going to be the fishing cabin here um, where all the fish can be stored maybe that they've caught I'm just going to put that wall in there to fill in the back and the same on the hunter's cabin as well there we go lovely and some doors on the back there maybe uh, store cupboards or something uh, for the staff to use and we're going to put in a nice little shop here. We need to have a shop uh, in this section. We can sell so much here. We can sell uh, toy spears, toy bow and arrows, loads of um, you know prehistoric uh, caveman style kind of gifts. So we've got plenty of stuff we can put in here. Um, and I'm just going to put in this here, which is lovely. Um, your own setup of a. Of a your own layout here of a, of a shop. So I'm just gonna put that in and try and make everything fit. So it doesn't quite fit those walls and you can't move things separately. It's all stuck together in one big block. Uh, so I'm gonna have to put walls at either side um, of those cabinets there with all the, with all the toys on see there there's a woolly mammoth cuddly toy there and a saber tooth one and there's even a few dinosaur toys in here as well so a nice variety for our 
guests and we'll bring one of these uh, little stalls outside selling the mammoth toys and the mammoth skulls and we'll put a mammoth skull on top of the um, on top of the shop there and here I was going to put some doors in but I when you have them open there's nowhere for it to really go so I think it'd be better to have some kind of shutter that just comes down uh, at night rather than um, a door. So we're going to put some logs in as supports. Lovely. And a few pots and baskets here, maybe full of toys and things for the guests and the children to have a look at. I just wish there was a few more things I could put in, a few more little models and stuff. Oh, here we're going to have some toy spears. Don't worry, they are not real spears there. They are just toy ones uh, for the children to uh, to play with. And then we're going to put some bones here. A bit like a Jolly Roger symbol, but instead of a human skull, we're going to have a mammoth skull um, at the top of the shop there. Lovely. Wonderful stuff. So there you have it. The Ice Age settlement is complete. It's all done. I rather enjoyed doing this build and I hope you enjoyed it too. If you did, please leave us a like and if you've got any more ideas, don't be shy. Leave your comments down below on what you think we should build next. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss what happens next. But for now, we'll leave it there, I think. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.